probably won't do much of a review tonight, just kind of jump in for the sake of time. I do want to touch base a little bit off of uh, where we left off last week. So I've kind of been consistently working through some really important aspects of men being mentally tough. Just remind us, I know this is something I've hammered every week, but you know, God does want us to win spiritually. I was talking with Scott Schweitzer before tonight, and you know, the principles of winning are really the same. They're the same in the physical realm as they are in the spiritual realm, because God set it up that way. And so, you know, some even though this is was written by businessmen taking the principles of winning at sports and applying to winning at business, it really is applicable to our spiritual lives. And so I hope that we as Christians have been able to take some things and apply in our spiritual lives because God wants us to win. He wants us to be overcomers. So last time we talked about performance ritual. I will maybe think of it more as routine. And one of the things that uh, Christine Bachmeyer just said to me afterwards, she's a very routine person, but she said sometimes you, if, you are, if you're glued to a routine, if you're dependent on a routine, so we talked about the importance of having a routine for performance, but sometimes there are circumstances that are outside your control where that routine is not able to be there. And we also have to be flexible within that, right? And so that's a challenge sometimes. Maybe people that are naturally more structured, and that's a really important part of your life, is you also have to develop flexibility for when the routine, some things change, and, you're, and they're not, you're not able to go through that exactly. You guys, I'm, I'm not positive about this, but you guys can maybe help me out. Is the Super Bowl, isn't the halftime at the Super Bowl substantially longer than the halftime of a regular NFL football game? Anybody know that? So that's always, a, I think, a challenge for those teams is because there's a routine that they've had 17, 18, 19, I don't know, however many games throughout the year and now there's a substantial difference in that. And they have to commit, the, the coaching staff, that have to commit some time to helping them adapt to something that's different than their normal routine. There's a young fellow from, ran for Bozeman High, and uh, amazing runner. He ran a, this past year, he ran a 404, 1600 in Great Falls, Montana on a windy day, okay? So he, he just had, was a participant in the, the Hoka One Mile National Championship for high school students. And uh, I know his, I'm sure his goal was to break the four minute mile and not to try to be a spoiler, but he got third place and he ran a 4.00.67. And that was a full mile, okay? Not 1600, it's just a little bit further. But one, I mean, which was really incredible, but it was, it's like, oh, 68 seconds hundreds of a second from the rest of your life being able to say in high school, I broke four minute mile, which is inc absolutely amazing, impressive feat. But one thing I noticed, I just, somebody had sent me the video of it and I watched it. They had a big production prior to that race. Totally different than what you're gonna get in any regular high school. So the routine gets thrown off. So you still, routine is important, but sometimes there are factors outside of your control and you still have to be flexible. You can't be so glued to it that you can't adapt. So typically in those situations, what you have to do is you have to take the parts of that routine that you have and th that you can carry with you and really focus in on that part and don't worry about the parts that you can't. So just a, a practical thing. So tonight we wanna to work on problem solving and creativity. And just a few verses that I wanna like to start out with. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we know God's creative abilities are substantially different than that of human beings. Okay? I mean, when the, the, the joke goes, the scientist basically tells God, I can, I can do anything you can do, God. And so they, he, they're going to have a little competition and, and start from the beginning. And so the, the scientist shows up, and he's got a, a bucket full of dirt. And God says, whoa, 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 whoa. Make your own dirt. Okay. There, there is, there's another creative aspect of God that's beyond us. But us being made in God's image, we have the ability within the framework of what he's given us also to create, don't we? Okay. To be creative. 
And so he wants us to do that as, as, as us who are made in his image. I like this one uh, in reference to Daniel. I personally have heard about you, Daniel, that you are able, able to give interpretations and solve difficult problems. Okay. Daniel was a very righteous man, but not only was he righteous, he was very skilled, and one of the things he was good at was solving problems. And we know that he gave God credit for that, but there were some skills that he had also along the way. And then I like this one, the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do. There are challenges that come up, and there need to be people who are solution-oriented, who know what needs to be done, okay, and figure that out. I was thinking about um, just a big picture sense. This is not going to be, tonight's lesson is going to probably be more applied to maybe things, you know, the problems that come up maybe in our in the world of business or that, that, that kind of stuff. But I was thinking in reference to people. And I, I want to clarify this very carefully. People are not problems to be fixed. If your perspective of people is problems to be fixed, then you aren't going to treat people right. Okay? It's not a... And, and some people, they, they're fixers. And they want to go in, they want to fix somebody, and they take them on as a project. And that's... You can't do that. Okay, it'll, sooner or later, that will backfire on you. You have to care about people as individual, eternal souls. But that being said, where you have people, you do have problems. Okay, problems come up. And you do have to be creative. You have to be a problem solver to find solutions to help people okay, through things. Does that make sense? There's a, there's a big difference. I want you to understand that. Don't, you can't look at people as projects or problems to be fixed. But when you are working with people, there are always going to be issues that come up. And so we want to be people who are creative and, and pr solve problems with the Lord's help. Sue. To, to continue that thought, uh, we were reading in Acts 15 today. And uh, Paul and Barnabas come back to Jerusalem, and they present, um, you know, all the good news of the Gentiles converting to the apostles. And some of the Pharisees says, well, these guys need to be circumcised now. And all of a sudden, they had this huge debate, and they needed to work it out together. And we're, we're thinking, like, shouldn't have God just, like, gave them a thou shalt not have to be uncircumcised again? <laughs> but, but he didn't do that. He, he didn't. He didn't show up and tell them anything. He let them work it out together. And I think that there's a, a valuable lesson in us working together to grow. And like, like you said, we're, we're not problems, but we, we do problem solve together. Amen. And so God, God allows us to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, thank you. That's a great example. Great, great dissension and debate, which if you just look at those two words, you can be like, oh, no. But it's, it was an important part as they came together to solve the, the problem in the way that the Lord would want. A couple, um, an example I thought of was uh, Acts chapter 6, where the Hellenistic Jews, their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. They had to figure out how to solve a problem together. And so it is, I, I like that, Sue, that we also, the emphasis on together. Okay? So it takes, and peop, different people have different strengths. I mean, I know what some of my strengths are, and I know what some of my weaknesses are. And details, I miss details a lot. So I'm very thankful for people that notice details. It's kind of interesting. I'll just, we could veer off here. But the Hellenistic Jews, those are Greek-speaking Jews, aren't they? I don't think there was some sort of terrible racism in the church in Jerusalem. But there was an overlooking of details by somebody that was important, and this particular group was being impacted by it. They, there had to be people that noticed it and then come together to solve the problem. So great, um, great emphasis on that. Joseph, in, when he was able to tell Pharaoh's dream, Joseph also got to, well, you're the, you're the guy to solve the problem. And so problems come up, and we want to be people who are able to solve those problems with the Lord's help. So some strategies, creativity and problem solving are the same process. The, your most creative times come when you're in the ideal performance state. So I just want to back up for a second. Anybody... Is there a difference between the high positive and the ideal performance state? Anyone? High positive is something we can choose to be in, and you can, that's going to consistently put you in the, 
80, 85, 90% performance. Okay? Ideal performance state is like, in addition to you being there, everything else is clicking. It's one of those that just everything goes seemingly perfectly for you. The, the high positive is the gateway to the ideal performance state. So as we talk about creativity, we're gonna do some things that will help us be consistently be able to be good, but there are still times you're gonna be better than others because in the most creative state, that's when you're in your ideal performance state. Very similar um, emotional place. So we wanna use the strategies of mental toughness to increase, increase creativity as well as to sustain the energy required to turn ideas into reality. Honestly, my favorite part of chemical engineering curriculum that I did, I loved problem solving. They give you, you know, it's okay, you got math and then you got engineering math and they throw a problem at you and here's what's going on and you gotta, you, in a very limited time constraint on those tests, my worst, you know, the, my least, or the scariest ones but that I really liked to, but you have four problems for the whole test. So you miss one, that's 75%. So it's like the pressure, but it's so fun to figure, okay, what's going on? What's the problem? How do we solve that? So oftentimes people went and Lance is not gonna come to me since he likes to pick on me a little bit in some of these areas. Lance is not going to come to me for artistic design help. Okay? He's, he's drawing, he's not gonna come to me as a mentor in that area, those aren't, gifts that I have, maybe that I have an aptitude for and I haven't developed those in my life. But problem solving and creativity are just the same part of the brain that works on those. So it's, it's fun. Uh, and successful people are very creative in finding solutions. I know I've mentioned Mikel Burry a number of times in this class, but I really admire Mikel. He's a great friend of mine, but I really, one thing I really admire him and try to, from being around him, adapt from him and, and take and develop into a strength for me is whenever something comes up in Mikel's world, he's a very think outside the box sort of guy, but he, he's always solution oriented. He's like, I mean, he'll, mm, okay. But he doesn't say, well, we're done, okay. This challenge came up, okay, shut her down, isn't gonna, that he never goes there, or at least not for a long ways down the road. He's like, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna make this happen? So successful people find, are, go into solution mode and are willing to be creative and think outside the box. Side note, since I always talk so good about Mikel, if you want somebody who's gonna live inside the box, he's not your guy, okay? Just telling you, he's not a rules follower. So if you don't put Mikel in a spot where you expect him to follow the rules perfectly, it's just not his, he. anyways. Okay, this, this dude, long quote, but I think it's worth mentioning. Every man who writes, paints, or composes knows by hard experience that there are days when his ideas flow freely and clearly and days when they are dammed up. On his good days, for some reason quite incomprehensible to him, all the pro processes and operations of his mind take on amazing ease and slickness. So he does a double or triple stint of the best work that he's capable of and goes to bed impatient for the morrow. Uh-oh, we all know what comes next, and on the morrow he discovers to his consternation that he's become almost idiotic and quite incapable of any work at all. That's why some of you people that are very creative and enjoy and you're writers or painters, like when you get in the zone, you don't really want to go to bed. Because while the flow's there and it's going and you're feeling it, you just want to ride that thing out. Because once you shut that, it's hard sometimes to get back into that spot. What, from this series, what does that sound like to you? the good part of this. White moment or ideal performance state, right? That's exactly what, so it's very similar. So why do the ideas flow so freely one day? Deed during one hour, dry up on the next. Mencken's description of the creative state, yeah, ideal performance state. This is a key point, the nature of the performance doesn't matter, the emotional state of the performer does. So. Performance and productivity are, in, in our world, oftentimes people, what's the bottom line? Bottom line, bottom line. And you'll see businesses that are sometimes constraining and all we care about is the performance. All we care about is getting this done. Well, oftentimes that, constrict, that creates an environment 
that doesn't allow ongoing growth, okay? The best are allow people, particularly who some of those strengths are creative, they give them an environment where they can, they can use that. It, the cool thing is, because we are made in the image of God, creativity does come as standard equipment with every fully configured human nervous system. Okay? You might say, I'm not a creative person. Well, for one thing, that's not true. Okay? Second thing is, you might be careful of your self-talk, because if you tell yourself you're not, then you won't be. Okay? But the reality of it is, just like anything else, is what you are willing to develop with that. It's creativity is strong in all children up to about age 10, but then declines because it's stifled. So one of, the, one of the things I love about some of our school children, they're very creative. So I'm gonna take pick on Izzy f f tonight because she knows I like to pick on her. But <clears throat> one of Izzy's strengths is very, very creative, artistic in her drawing, comes up with amazing stuff. Sometimes, maybe in the moment, she could be getting a little more schoolwork done, but the creativity is flowing. Okay, there's, there's a balance in there, okay? Because you don't want to just stifle out that creativity. Okay? So sometimes, Izzy even has shown me some of our notes, feel that she's taken in this, and they're the, the Misty Daniel type styled after that. Have you guys seen some of Misty Daniels from like Family Can? And it's really a cool way if you're a creative person of taking those notes and stuff, getting in there. So we want to develop that within it. I, in my life, have had poor self-talk about creativity. And one of the things that I used to say is I, I flunked kindergarten art. And even as if they say you're creative till you're 10 years old, and it's like, as a five-year-old, though, I, I'm, there's things in my brain that, the lines, you know, staying in the lines, and I, I, it always bothered me that my inability to always do that. Well, that's not even, like the most creative people don't stay in the lines. They make their own, right? So anyways, it's something that can be developed, and it's important for us to be able to use it in the right ways. So no matter how long they lay idle, the creative abilities remain dormant but ready, like seeds that can bloom only in the proper environment. So I'm, I'll just veer off for a second. Targeting truth videos. Okay. When I have to think about a message, not just saying it, but how do you communicate this visually? When that kind of fell into my lap, because the guy that started with me was a very creative person, but wasn't able to keep doing it. Okay. The creativity fell off a little in the, in the targeting truth videos, but I noticed it was good for me because another side of my brain is, is working on the communication level. Okay. Same with putting PowerPoint messages together. When I have to learn to think vis uh, in, in pictures a little more, it helps to, it helps another part of my brain in terms of communication. There was something I was gonna ask you guys. I just went in and out. Give me a second here. Okay, I know what I was gonna ask. How many of you, so how many of you just consistently at least want to read your Bible a little bit every day? Okay. So many of us, that's a habit. Some of us are developing the habit and oftentimes just in little sections, right? Something you can read consistently and get through. How many of you though sometimes like wanna just step back and like read the book of Isaiah in just one shot, like just read through it? And if you notice, if you just read through it and because like sometimes in the moment when I'm reading day by day, I can be very focused on the details and the particulars. Okay. So did you say you read Acts 15 today? So you, when you were reading Acts 15, th those particulars were there and you were thinking about that and how that works. And that's a really cool thing about the scripture. But sometimes when you back up and you just like read a whole book and you don't worry so much about the details and just let the pictures come, it's really cool because sometimes you get another perspective of that story. Okay? And so to be able to think in, in pictures is an important part of this creative side of things. So the most significant result of testing for creativity is that it is present in everyone. So it is present in you. Lots of people think it doesn't have much to do with the real world, although we've come quite a ways since 1980s, and a lot of successful companies have been ones that they allowed a creative environment, and a, a lot of profit came from that over the long haul. 
we know that profit comes from goods and services, but that comes from insight, innovation, and invention. invention. It comes from creativity. So creativity is the ability to identify and solve problems, and it makes the real world go round. Most general constellations, I already hit this, but of the creative state and the ideal performance state are identical. Because of external variables, you cannot guarantee to be in the ideal performance state. I'm not um, a big NBA fan by any means. I like to read about sports, and it did surprise me. I forget one of these, some of these series, NBA playoffs, how these teams, one night, one team can beat somebody by 30 points, and the other team, the other, the other night, and that, the other team will beat the other one by 30. It's like, how this dis disparity? Same two teams playing a few nights apart. It's like, wow, what? Well, it's, it, it tells you that how big of a difference sometimes the little differences make in an emotional state. When the emotional state is there and some things start clicking that make it that high pause to be able to grow, like the difference or when the, maybe one of those teams falls into a, a little bit of the high negative, the difference is that plays out in terms of points. So there are external variables. There's no guarantee of being in the high performance state, but we can be in the high positive, which is our gateway to that. So does this mean that creativity only comes to you fortuitously? To some extent, yes. So how many of you are, let's see, is, I know Mrs. Tuck loves to write, and there are some times that the writing just phew, going, right? I think Ashley likes to write, some, there are some times it's just going, okay? Those, to some extent, yes. But it's like other mental skills that can be developed and enhanced You'll be better at it at some times than others, but you can always be very good. Again, let's, let's think about this a little bit in, realm of, in the realm of the spiritual. There's probably a number of ways we can go this. I'll just say, our, sometimes you're Bible saying with somebody, and you can be going through a typical way that you go through a study, and you can tell stuff isn't quite clicking. It's like it's not connecting this way. Okay. You care about this person's soul. You have to step back and you have to think, okay, what's another way that I can approach this to try to help this information actually get through? Okay. That's a real thing. It happens, doesn't it? Okay. There are some people you can just, yeah, a lot of people go through the same thing. Yeah, they get it. There are some people, it's like you can tell they're not, they, they are in, like some people just aren't spiritually interested. That's not what I'm talking about. No, people that are interested but they aren't getting it in this manner. And you have to be creative. And let's think about a couple verses on this too. James chapter 1 comes to mind. If any of you lacks wisdom, what is he supposed to do? Let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously without reproach. God will help you. Ask for wisdom. He'll help you be creative to get done what needs to get done. What are maybe some other ways? Um, there are obstacles that come up in our spiritual life, sometimes in reference to us working with other people, sometimes in our own personal growth. And it, it seems like, man, nothing is going right. Nothing's like this, these things, these goals that I have, that I'm trying to get there, and, and everything seems to be working against me about the time I make progress here. You know, this is, this is a career path I want to follow to be able to do this for the Lord and doors keep closing here and there. Well, Romans, 8, chap Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You can step back and say, okay, God, I trust you. I know that all things work together for good. And so instead, because if you get in a mentality where all the doors are closing and you start, I'll just say it, you start tanking. And when you start tanking, you can quit spiritually, I mean, in, in ver to various degrees in your spiritual life. We don't want to do that. So to be able to step back and say, God, I trust you. Okay. I know you, I, I plan my ways, you direct my paths. Okay. I know that you do cause all things to work together for good. You are in a place where you can actually stay in the right mental environment with God's help and find the open door that he wants you to take. But if you don't do that, if you allow the circumstances to bog you down and you get 
inside a box that you've created yourself and you're stuck in that, man, you can just grind down to nothing in there. And so we want to, we want to be able to take these principles and apply them spiritually. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, participants asked how they felt, what they were doing when they got their best ideas. I don't know if I want to open this up or not. Interestingly enough, there's no surprise about how they felt. Okay? How they felt is they were in the high positive. Okay? The best is when they were in the ideal performance state. But how they felt was they're almost always in the high positive when you get your best ideas. Okay? Low positive can happen. Um, you can get some really good ideas in low positive. Low negative, you got nothing's coming your way. And high negative, you're just torching up some of your good ideas. So typically it's in the high positive. But what's really interesting and it was surprising is that the ideas that arrived during those creative times bore no relationship to what the person was doing. Okay? I'm gonna give just a really little example. I went and visited Elena and she was working on my teeth in her dental hygiene program. And so we went and then I said, hey, let's, let's go to your gym afterwards. And neither of us really felt like, going, let's just go do, let's go do something. So we went and did a quick, you know, 15, 20 minute lift and then hopped on the treadmill next to each other and just went like 15 minutes was all. On the but she was telling, she started talking to me when she was on the trip. It's like, hey, I figured this thing, this idea that I need for this assignment, like while she was in there, in that, with me, having a good time in that room, that's when the idea came to her for her school. If she would have been confined to her room studying, the idea probably would have never came. Does that make sense? It's just the way it works. If you can be in the high positive in something else. Okay? I, now, for me, golfing, I've not found a way to stay in the high positive golfing. It usually pushes me to the high negative very quickly. So a little bit of golfing I've done. But have you noticed how many successful people, they go, like, when there's ways that they find that are the relaxing that they enjoy while they're doing it, some of their best ideas and work gets done there. Some of you that love to hike or run, same thing. I, I know when I used to run a lot, you, there is something that they call a runner's high. And it's like almost like your brain goes outside of your body and it's like looking down on this whole thing and you just, ideas come to you that are, I, in, I'll just leave it at that. So <clears throat> this dude, I forgot to actually look this guy up, a little more information on him, I wanted to. So I'm not even going to pronounce his name. I'm just going to say this dude, Henry, made one of his greatest mathematical discoveries while on a geological expedition. I apologize for not figuring out what that was. But he wasn't doing math. He's out looking at geology, some sort of Jay Wilson sort of fella. And uh, while he's out there doing that, then one of his mathematical discoveries comes to him. Again, I want to emphasize, so... I do remember in college a few times going to sleep with an unresolved math problem or engineering problem and waking up in the morning and knowing how to do it. Now, which isn't surprising, right? Because of the way your brain works. But what if you allow yourself again to tank? Any of you ever kind of tanked before you went to sleep at night? How well, how well do you... Is that high performance level sleep in any way? Okay. If you aren't going to wake up in the morning, if you can keep staying in the right frame of mind, prayer is a really important thing, guys. God works with us. Okay. But also one of the things that God does when we pray to him is he allows us to actually be in a, in a relaxed mental state. We cast all our anxiety upon him because he cares for us. Okay. And it's, it's a mentally and physically healthy place to be. So again, trusting God is important for us as Christians in this process. So what is it about the high positive that brings forth unrelated insights and solutions? The answer seems to lie in the two hemispheres of the frontal part of the brain, the right brain and the left brain, which you guys know I need a little bit of help with this. Dr. Roger Sperry of CIT was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1981 for discovering these two hemispheres process information differently. So the frontal hemispheres handle most of your conscious acts, speech, writing, drawing, throwing, catching, etc. They divide the work of controlling the body with each hemisphere responsible for the opposite half of the body. So my dad likes to say if the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, then the left-handed people are the only ones in the right mind. Okay. He, 
He enjoys that one. What's interesting, at birth, the hemispheres are separate but equal. By age five, the two hemispheres are no longer mirror images. So you remember when you have kids and you're trying to figure out, I wonder if they're going to be right-handed or left-handed. And at first, they kind of are doing stuff with both. Somewhere they kind of choose, they default to one or the other. Or if, they, if they're left-handed, lots of times they'll be a little bit ambidextrous for extended period of time. But as that plays out by the time of five, they're no longer mirror images I didn't skip something here. Anyways, the dominant hemisphere is usually the left, as evidenced by the fact that most people are right handed. What percentage of people are left handed? Can you say one out of ten, approximately? Three? One in seven? Okay. One in seven. I'm not getting all the, the, the left and right verbals. So one out of 10, 10 percent, one out of seven. Anyways, we know how, let's just do this. How many people in here are left-handed? So Scott is, Gary is, Claire is, and Jeff, you're both, you're ambidextrous. Really? Well, you need some work with your right-handed ping pong. I remember that handle flying out of your right hand and hitting me in the head. So anyways, um, what, so what's interesting, the left hemisphere, so the, the left hemisphere tends to process information sequentially, words and numbers and speech. The right hemisphere tends to process information as patterns rather than sequences, as images rather than symbols. You can try this at home. I tried it and I did better than I expected, so it didn't work perfectly. Well. But they said, I did notice a slight difference. But if you take a pencil and you put it on your right finger and balance it like horizontally on there, so you, you're balancing this pencil and then talk while you're doing that. You'll find it, you can do it, but it's a little bit of a challenge to talk and balance this at the same time. Okay. Why is that? Because the left, left hemisphere is having to do both those things. If you turn around and you balance it on the left, it's substantially easier to talk. Okay. I was able to do both, but I noticed it's easier when I'm balancing on the left because a different aspect, the different side of your brain is controlling one of them. Okay. So kind of a fun thing. How about this? You guys tell me. Say the color, and I don't let the spelling of the word color bug you. Okay, just try this. Red, yellow, orange, black, green, white, purple, blue, green, orange, red. Do you guys, how'd you do? Some of us did better than others, but it is, it's a little bit of a challenge in that you have to override what you're wanting to do. Okay? And so it's, it's the left-right conflict. Okay? When, when the two halves of the brain work together, that's when you get into your rhythm or your groove. And so going in, getting in the high positive brings, brings both sides of the brain up to speed, and that's why creative insights and long-sought solutions so often materialize during unrelated but pleasant energizing activities. Whoops. What is going on here? I don't know what I did, but I got us way out of, <laughs> I jumped to the end somewhere. I didn't know we had this much left, I better hurry. Okay, some challenges lend themselves to one hemisphere, some to the other. How do you go about switching hemispheres on demand? Well, one switch is handy. So if you wanna be more creative, take your left hand and start doodling something with your left hand. Okay, and it will actually get you into that other side of your brain. Okay? It's, it's very handy, no pun intended. And automatically then, you, they switch back to their right automatically, putting their ideas into words. Left-handed people, it's a little more complicated, but since that only applies to a few of you, I'm not worried about it. You guys figure it out. You guys can try the nostril breathing technique, okay? Switching those, I still have, so 
if you want to be in the right side of your brain, which nostril do you want to breathe through? Left. Very good. You guys got me straightened out on that. Okay. So visualization strategies, if you, if you need to be in the right brain, look at a picture, preferably abstract. And the reason you want to be abstract is because otherwise, if you're like me, you're wired a little bit like me, you can be looking at a really beautiful picture, painting, whatever, but the coloring in the lines mode, you're noticing all the lines. You can still go and be breaking everything down. So a little bit abstract allows you to actually be in the right side of the brain. Creative insights often come during unrelated physical activity. There's ample supply of glucose and oxygen, and both hemispheres are active. So two facets to problem solving. This is one of the, so many of, in this course, it's been a good review for me. Lots of these things in my life I have put into practice over the years, just part of who I am. But there's been a few good reminders. Here is a very important thing that I picked up on um, years ago that I think is so important, and it's easy to fall, it's easy to miss this. Two facets of problem solving. One, generating ideas, and then two, evaluating those ideas, okay? Super important in life, don't try to do them both at the same time. I have a tendency to come up with an idea and automatically say, oh, no, that would never work. Some of the best ideas get tabled before they're ever on the table because you shut them down. So do not, this, you have to, rem, I have to remind myself, now is, now is not the time. I'm not evaluating. It's just ideas. It helps me, and you guys, some of you guys have heard me say, I, I have this crazy idea. And the reason, if I say crazy idea, that's allowing me to put it out there without trying to decide right now whether or not it's a good idea. Does that make sense? For me, it helps me. I got, I got a crazy idea, just going to throw it out there. If I say crazy, it takes off me saying, well, all the reasons why it might not work. Okay. So the idea is there's a place for ideas, and that's not the time to determine whether or not those ideas are good ideas. You can do that later, and you want to do that later. You know, I, I have a few people in my life that I really trust, and maybe sometimes even with a Bible study, I'll say, I mean, I've done a lot of Bible studies, and I know what I'm doing, but sometimes I say, hey, I want a fresh, I want a fresh idea. Here's the scenario. And I want to, most of the time, what I get back is what I already was planning to do. But every once in a while, I get an idea that's really good that I wouldn't have thought of. That's very helpful. And so there's, there's times in your guys' life, you can figure out how to do this, but it's also helpful if you have the right people. Okay, you, and I, when I say this, the right people have to be people you really trust that aren't going to shoot down everything. Okay? Oftentimes, groupthink really destroys that. Maybe we'll get to that in a second. But when the ideas are flowing, don't try to be practical. Just write those ideas down. Let them come. Let them flow. And later you can come back. Again, I know Elise has talked to me enough about some of the ways she does her writing that she does have a bunch of different ideas that show up all over the place. And then, not going into your technique, but... You know, there's an ideas place, and then later you can evaluate and figure out the practicality of those. I have, again, I'll just emphasize that. I have to emphasize, but the, like, let the ideas come. Later we can decide. Both of them are important. And actually sometimes, wow, 802, there are people in the, there are people who are really great ideas people and sometimes not great at executing the plan. Guys, figure out how to team up. Like the most successful people are people that figure out how to team up with those strengths. I've known amazing idea pr people, but they want control and they don't know how to control. <laughs> so they, the idea is great and the execution just goes completely by the wayside. Then there are people that are really good at executing but not so great at ideas and they're afraid to ever let, figure out and within the body of Christ, if we can figure out how to work together it's very, very helpful. Sometimes help things think backward, challenge assumptions, break it up into smaller sections, interject humor, make analogies. Aren't you guys thankful for the parables, actually? The book of Revelation. Different ways of communicating the same stuff. It's, it's fun. It gives you a different perspective. And then keep, keep probing at stuff. Creativity is like a, a little bit like communication. There's many ways to discourage it. 
And again, the group brainstorm works against creativity. It's interesting. They've done little competitions where, like, I, f I forget what the details are, but spaghetti, you know, the s uncooked spaghetti things, marshmallows, other stuff, and how high, how tall can, how, what's the biggest thing you can make out of this? In kindergarten classes, whoop everybody else. Business, business, Harvard Law, all, the kindergarten classes, you know why? Because they, they don't care about wanting anybody. So they'll be like, oh yeah, oh that's good. And they just, go, and they're pushing, and they're, but, but they're, if somebody, they're not taking it personal. When somebody says, oh no, this is a better way, you know, they just, oh yeah, and then they just keep doing it. Business students or even business partners, lots of times, the, so if somebody else shuts it down, it shuts it down. Okay? So you want to be careful with that. Collect ideas, value them later, and don't judge your own, just get them down. Winning isn't normal. Creative people aren't crazy. There can be crazy ideas. And this is the truth. People can be tough to work with when they're being creative. Some of the greatest ideas people that I have known and were, are sometimes when they're in that, they, they can be very, very difficult to work with. But they're bringing something to the table that I certainly don't have. And so figure, figure out how to make it work. Solitude, daydreaming are integral to creativity, require sustained energy. Super important, don't be afraid to try and fail. Okay, because you gotta try over and over and over again that's the bottom line of this. And when you understand the, the way this works, okay, it's the people that, that keep trying, keep new ideas, they fail, they come back, they learn something from it, they learn something from it, they learn, and they stick with it. That's where success comes from. So you want to be willing to learn. You want to say, okay, that didn't work. Okay. If you keep, the definition of insanity is what? Anybody? Definition of insanity? Yeah, okay, we don't want to do that, but we do want to keep trying. Just make adjustments and try. It's not a failure, it's figuring out. And so for the, for the Lord, I mean, the Lord is really interesting. He gives us this mission, go make disciples. He doesn't really spend a lot of time telling how. Why? He wants to be creative and figure out how. Okay? And different times, different places, really appreciate you checking in on Dylan. I haven't checked in on him in like three weeks. So thank you for... It, there's some things in Cambodia that are probably a lot different than here. Okay? And so the Lord isn't going to box us in. That's not the way he works. So we need to be creative individually and as a body. And I, I'm going to just emphasize what Sue did earlier. Work together to be solution-oriented. I'll just close this tonight and say thank you. Thank everybody for being here and being a part of contributing to the momentum of the Lord's church here. Okay? we got to... We got a great mission in front of us and uh, a huge, huge work to do. And it's fun when, you know, this core group of people, we come together and, and are working together to make it happen.